Sometimes it seems that dinosaurs are just about everywhere, in films, books, comics, and even theme parks. And with the help of the Dinosaur Whisperer and his team, we try to untangle dino fact from fiction in our continuing feature, The Dinosaur Show. Here's a look. Hello, Team Dino. I just saw Jurassic World, and while I'm not really qualified to speak on the acting, the dialogue, or the screenplay, it'd be remiss of me as the Dinosaur Whisperer to not comment upon the scientific accuracy of the dinosaurs portrayed therein. So, without further ado, here are the top 10 dinosaurs of Jurassic World in relative descending order from least scientifically accurate, in my opinion, to the most scientifically accurate. Let's go. The Mosasaur in Jurassic World was incredibly impressive but maybe a little bit too impressive to be accurate. So by all accounts, it was about two to four times larger than they actually were in real life, and there's zero evidence they'd be able to jump out of the water to the height that it did to eat the great white shark. But one awesome detail they did include are the palatal teeth on the roof of its mouth, similar to a lot of reptile and fish species that we see alive today. Pterosaurs. I love the fact that there are flying reptiles in Jurassic World, but both the Pteranodon and the Dimorphodon were definitely too big. In addition, these guys had pretty thin, almost paper thin bones, so the ability to have the strength to lift up something the size of a human, not possible. Velociraptor. Now I understand that they need to keep it similar to the Velociraptor from the original movies, but there's still a lot of problems with the Velociraptor. One, way too big, looks more like a Utah Raptor. Two, we now know they were covered in feathers, still no feathers. And then in the movie, it also mentioned their ability to run, if out in the open, 40 to 50 miles per hour way too fast. They would not have been able to run that fast. T-Rex, the perennial favorite, the king of all the dinosaurs, some would argue America's dinosaur. There weren't much updates in Jurassic World, it looked very, very similar. Um, problems that exist, we now know that a lot of T-Rex's relatives had at least some downy tufts, some proto feathers at the very least, so why not add a little proto feathers to T-Rex? Also, way too big still, they definitely exaggerated the size of T-Rex. Stegosaurus, definitely one of my favorites, they definitely made it a little bit bigger in this movie, but the thing that they missed, an opportunity they definitely missed, is to show the plates in a more anatomically correct position. So we know that the plates were not fused to the spine, they're actually embedded in the skin, kind of like osteoderms, which means they probably laid flat along the side of its body, except for in times when it was either displaying for mating purposes, or maybe trying to scare away a predator. Two for one, the Apatosaurus and the Triceratops. I'm lumping them together because they did a pretty good job in displaying both of them. The horns look great on the Triceratops, but I'm still kind of disappointed that all these guys are this grayish, brownish, green, kind of like crocodilian color. Why not add a little bit more color? You added colors to Velociraptors, why do these guys gotta still look dull gray like an elephant? Gallimimus, definitely one of my favorites, probably my favorite scene from the first Jurassic Park. This movie, about the right size, they look pretty good, but where are the feathers? Its name literally means chicken mimic. Can a brother get some feathers up in this piece? Ankylosaurs. Definitely had a more prominent role in Jurassic World than previous films. Loved them, I thought they looked great. The armor looked phenomenal. Those two bowling ball sized tail clubs at the end, amazing. Indominus Rex. Now I know what you're thinking, you're like, wait a minute. We're at number two, and I thought these were supposed to be getting more realistic as we go. But when you, from the get-go, claim that you are making a dinosaur out of scratch, then it can be as realistic or unrealistic as you want. And I love the fact that they took some creative liberty, some artistic license, to make a really menacing, interesting looking hypothetical dinosaur. When you try to recreate an exact replica of a real dinosaur, for instance a T-Rex or Velociraptor, all it takes is getting one or two little things wrong and people are going to be all up in arms. But when you say from the get-go that this is not a real thing, you can create whatever you want. And the fact that they did that and actually used some elements from realistic looking dinosaurs to create something that in my mind, wasn't so far-fetched. I mean, we now know a lot of dinosaurs had those neural spines or had those weird, um, like, hair filaments coming out of their arms. It looked like a combination between an Allosaur, a T-Rex, and a Velociraptor. And if you're trying to make a blockbuster, Indominus Rex did the job. And now, the number one most scientifically sound, accurately depicted dinosaur in all of Jurassic World, the Corvus. Birds are dinosaurs. I'll see you guys next time. To see more about these prehistoric creatures from the Dinosaur Show team, check out the link on our website.